I won't keep going on about the heat. I won't keep going on about the heat. I just won't do it. I'll stop, all right? These are extraordinary conditions for the northwest of England. It never gets this warm up here. And, well, it's just killing people. And there are a lot of freckled people in this part of the world because many Irish settlers came to Salford and Manchester. Freckled people with fair hair and ginger hair. And they're not doing very well. Anyway, let's welcome back to the programme. Um, an amazing guy, great friend of ours. I, I al- always say it, he has been accurately predicting trends, both the geopolitical trends and, of course, importantly, economic trends for more years than you and I care to remember. He's a very humble guy with it as well, a humanitarian, brilliant broadcaster and the publisher of the genuinely legendary trends journal, trendsresearch.com. And he's been getting a lot right uh, of late, he has. Welcome back to the programme. Men want to be him and women want to be with him, our friend Gerald Salente. Welcome back, my friend. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. It's very kind of you. I'm not taking the mickey. When, whenever I announce you're coming on, my Twitter feed fills up with um, uh, women. Listeners, oh, I love Gerald. It's the Italian, yeah. you see. It's that accent. No, seriously, welcome back. It's been, um, it's been a few months since you were on. Brilliant um, work on the journal, obviously. Um, we're going to talk about gold and, and other things. How are you now? <laughs> because we spoke back in uh, late April, early May, when this thing was in, I suppose, the middle of the madness. How are you now with everything that's going on? How are you feeling? Well, how am I? <clears throat> I feel, you know, business is, you know, it's fine, but I feel terrible. You know, I, I, all the joy has been sucked out of life. You know, to see streets empty, to see people you know, walking down empty streets with masks on, driving in cars with windows up and masks on. And um, and again, avoiding all the facts, all the data. Everyone's living in fear. New York City. New York City's a ghost town. It's, the place is dead now. It's dead. And not only there, it's it's all over. You want to go to Chicago? Oh, wonderful. Yeah, they put up the, the bridge. I used to live in Chicago at one time. They put up the, all the bridges around the loop on the Magnificent Mile, because everybody was looting, a bunch of people were looting the joint on Monday. You know, and it's going on, violent crime is rising, it's going off the charts. Again, as you well know, getting the Trends Journal, I said this would happen when they began to lock down everything. You when did. people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And they're losing it. People are going out of their minds, they're broke, they're desperate, they're, uh, they, they're locked in their homes, they, they have no social lives and they're watching the world, you know, disintegrate in front of them. And so this is so you ask me how I feel. You know, one of the, my greatest passions other than uh, food and lovely, uh, you know, what? Yeah, to be yeah, with yeah. you know who. <laughs> I don't want to get arrested. You know, <laughs> you can <laughs> say what you want picture, here. There is a picture in my Zizzy book. I was one of three Italian kids in an all Irish Catholic school. And there's a picture of me and Teresa McKelvey in the first grade, all dressed <laughs> up in our white costumes, holding hands. And we used to kiss in religious instructions. But anyway, moving Fantastic. forward, Brilliant. my other great passion is music. And, you know, that was America's greatest export from the greats of jazz, from Jelly Roll Morton to Louis Armstrong, Count Basie, Duke Ellington. All the way going through the, the, the late 40s when it's the beginning of rock and roll, you know, and Lynn Hope, people n- never heard of these cats, you know, Smiley Lewis, and then going into, you know, Fats Domino, Elvis Presley. I love music. I love music. I have thousands of hours of tapes that I took it off the radio. I don't listen to it anymore. Every time my friends would come over, anytime music was always playing, I don't play it anymore. My heart is so sad. I'm a visionary and I see the future and I see hell on earth and it's happening in front of our eyes. Just as people marched off to, 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 to Mussolini and saluted Stalin and Heil Hitler, they're doing the same thing now. They're following their leaders. Again, wear a mask. Hey, go to Sweden. They're not wearing masks. Norway, they're not wearing masks there either, are they? No. How about uh, Iceland? No, no masks there. Uh, Denmark? No, no, they're not. Belgium? No, no, no. Netherlands? No. But you have to wear a mask. You must wear a mask. I am your leader. And I'll tell you what else you got to do. 
Well, yeah, it's okay to sit outside and eat in a restaurant, but you can't go inside. But you're outside. It's okay to sit outside and eat. But when you stand up after you finish eating, you got to put the mask back on. Oh, and if you're in Europe, oh, it's one meter away. If you're in or Germany and France, it's one and a half meters away. <laughs> if you're in New York or in the United States, it's two meters away. Let me get this straight. I want to tell everybody out there. These are the same sick people, the same deranged maniacs, the same power hungry, moronic scum freaks that had me and my generation hiding under desks in case an atom bomb went off, putting us through air raid drills, frightening the hell out of us. And then when we got in high school, they made us stand up against the wall in the halls because you were too big to get under a desk with our hands behind our head and telling us that if you see a flash, don't look at it. Yeah. If I see a flash, don't look at it. I'll be dead before I could blink my eyes, <laughs> you scum moron jerk. Hey, wait a minute, Salenti. Calm down. I am an official. I am an official piece of crap, and I tell you what to do in Slavelandia. Oh, and hiding under a desk. Oh, yeah, that'll protect you really great. These are the same craps that are destroying our lives, locking down the economies, and cause the greatest depression, not only economically, but morally and spiritually as well. You're articulating brilliantly what people are feeling inside about the arbitrary nature of it. I think last time you were on, you talked about the arbitrary nature of the rules and regulations. They're ridiculous. They're whimsical. They're nonsensical. And yet people go along with them. It's funny you mentioned we had the same thing when I was in primary school in Waterford in Ireland. They gave us the same drills. I mean, they knew. And you make an, it's a great analogy to draw. They knew back then that Russia didn't have the capability, nor did it have the intention to launch nuclear weapons against anybody. They knew this, and yet they subjected us to that. That's very telling that. There is a link there somewhere, isn't there? They want there to keep is. us terrified. Yeah. This is what I'm saying, but yeah. it's no different than everybody that marching off to, to Heil Hitler or Mussolini or Stalin. The people get, they, they, they're sold fear easily. Here, we have the data in the magazine. Number one, name the country, the, name, the, name the, the newspapers. They're firing people left and right. Ad revenue on all the broadcast media way down. Firing people. You, again, the quote from this guy, Jeff Zucker, and you can take the Z out and put any letter in front of it that you want, <laughs> is, the, is the head of CNN. Back when this broke out, and it was getting all the headlines, he told his staff to stay on it because people were tuning in. Their, to their, their, their ratings were in the toilet before this, as was much of the mainstream broadcast media. Was, yeah. They've gone up 120%. They sell fear. These are the same craps that when there's a hurricane coming, they all get dressed up in their hurricane drag. And they go out to the beach and the water's coming over the boardwalk and the, and the palm trees are blowing and they're scaring the hell out of everybody. This is who they are. And the people are just gutless wonders, not only now, but it's been going on. Look, my time that I've spent in Germany, every German my age, younger and older, that I speak to, are ashamed of themselves that they didn't stop Hitler. This country was destroyed. Berlin was grander than Paris before it was bombed out. And the Germans were at the height of Western civilization in the 1930s, culturally, scientifically, philosophically. And the people followed a guy that Charlie Chaplin played better than he did. Yeah. Heil Hitler. Why, why didn't they stop it before everything was destroyed? Why didn't the people stand up? The same reason going on for generations. I have a great art piece 
by uh, someone that did Napoleon's March to Germany. And it mirrors the weather going toward Moscow. He leaves with 420,000 people from the Polish border. Comes back with 10,000. 420,000 comes back with 10,000. This has been going on forever. People have no courage. Very, very few. But it does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. And I've done it. I held that rally on the 4th of July, Unite for Peace and Restore Freedom rally here. I had Judge Napolitano as one of the speakers, how they're robbing us of our constitutional and Bill of Rights. Yeah. Against the law. We're not allowed to have them. I said, let me get this straight. You allowed Black Lives Matter to have rallies and you're not going to allow me to have one on the 4th of July Independence Day? Come on and shut me down. Come on and shut me down. Oh, little Andy Cuomo. That's right. You come and stop me. No, no, no. Leave your goons behind. Man to man. Try to put a mask on me and try to stop me. I held a rally. I put my money in my heart where my mouth is. I put out a magazine. You see that 72 pages yesterday, a yeah, weekly magazine. Right, yeah, yeah. We put our heart and soul into this. And we had some great contributors. One of them, Neil Anderson, may rest in peace, to occupy peace. And that's what we need. We need money to make it happen. You need money to make it happen. So everybody out there, put your money where your heart and your mind are. Or else die as a piece of garbage crap that bend over and took it up the you know what from the people that are destroying liberty, love, joy, and beauty out of life. How am I doing? That's how I'm doing. I'm heartbroken. Gerald Salente pr- uh, produces the brilliant Trends Journal, trendsresearch.com. Do subscribe to it. You've got to support this type of independent journalism, especially when it's accurate. Um, to a, to a, to, it's faultless the magazine and I'm not just saying that I don't endorse very much let me, let, let me just go back to you hold the rally and you put it up to them and you win the day and I think again there's a lesson in there I think a lot of the power that people believe that these elites have they've only got it because we believe in it it's down to our faith in their dominance and when you do what you did more often than not um, you win the day. I think there's a big lesson there for people. There's nothing to be scared of. Get out and about and go about your normal lives. Get back to work, open your businesses. You know what they reckon here, Gerald? They reckon that millions upon millions of people have yet to realise their job is gone. They're on this furlough scheme at the moment where they're at home and the government is paying 80% of their wages. But of course, the company has to bear that burden in the near future. And many of these companies are being very honest and they are saying, well, we're going to be letting lots of people go in the near future. This is a kind of a limbo thing. And I'm like, what will it take for these people to, to stand up and fight against that? Because it's their houses on the line, their cars, their, their properties. And you've given a great example there. Ignore their nonsensical arbitrary rules and get out there and do what you need to do for yourself. And more often than not, they'll back down, right? Oh, yeah, they're cowards. But again, you know, they, they got these little jerks. You know, the, by the way, the Kingston police here are great. They didn't bother me at all. The Kingston police only are only around when, when there's cr- crime. They're not busting your chops for going through a stop sign or a little garbage. Great. But then you look at these other places. There's, there's one that just came out of um, Victoria, uh, uh, Australia, Victoria, uh, uh, Melbourne of this cop throwing this woman down on the ground because she's not wearing a mask. Yeah, choking her. And handcuffing her. A little boy, a little little tough boy, a little tough boy. People say, what should you do? What, what should I do? There's three things you got to do. You have to get in the best shape you can physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And learn how to fight. Learn how to protect yourself. I, I, was a, I was a little kid. You know, I was, I was the shortest kid in the school. And I grew up, you know, born in the Bronx. I learned how to fight right away because the bullies went after me. Then I learned close combat. 
And now we have Brad Steiner, one of the top close combat guys, who was the teacher of my teacher, that's writing for us in the Trends Journal on urban survival. Yeah. And that's what people better get hip to because violent crime is going to escalate. As I say, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. You better learn how to protect yourself in every way you can. Is it going to get to that, do you think? We've had the Manchester police here in the UK threatening to come down harder on people because last weekend they got 1,100 phone calls from concerned members of the public. How lousy do you have to be for me to pick the phone up if I'm living across the street from you? How lousy do you have to be as a human being to phone the cops and say, oh, Salente and his wife across the road, they're, uh, they've got friends around and they shouldn't have. I mean, this, uh, this is sick. I can't believe this is going on. But th the cops are saying we're going to get even tougher. We've got public health officers in the UK. This is scary stuff, Gerald. And they, working with local councils, are going around to people's houses to make sure they're quarantining if they've come back from a country. And they do have the power to order a constable to come along and cart somebody off to be tested. This is all true. So is that the sort of thing you're talking about? That you might yeah, need to be physically... Yeah. You, 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 they, you, if, if you're coming from like 38 other states out of 50, you got to be quarantined for two weeks. And they, and they have to sign all this stuff. They, they document it. They go looking for you. And you can get fined of up to $10,000. That's what I was saying to yeah, you. tyranny. This is like... Stalin, Hitler, or, Mu or Mussolini. The people made it happen. The Stasi. They rat you out. This is what I'm saying. The people have fallen in line with to follow the orders of the criminals. You said this from day one. When we, when we spoke at the very beginning of this back in March, you said from day one this would happen. I didn't believe you. I didn't want to believe you. I thought, no, they won't. They won't. They'll draw a line at ratting out their next door neighbours. And you were bang on. It's what they've been doing. And then what you said about the economy. Mm. Yeah, they're artificially propping it up now. Again, you're looking at Yelp saying, you know, that some 53% of the, the restaurants are going to be out of business. Already 3,000 have closed down in New York City. 3,000? Yeah. My God. 3,000 businesses have closed down in New York City already. That, that's God knows how. So three thousand multiplied by five. That's fifteen thousand people minimum gone. Job gone. And then, then the occupancy rate of, of commercial, you know, offices. Yeah. Eight percent. So now all the transportation, you know, it's gone, and all the businesses that survive on people coming into big cities, you know, and gone. And now, you know, I've been, I said this had happened from the beginning, by yeah, the way, you did. that they'd be leaving the big, this is new. As you well know, they're leaving big cities going to exurban areas. This never happened before. Commercial real estate's going to be in the toilet. Nobody's going to want to buy that stuff. People are leaving the cities and by, they probably over a million have left New York area already. They're, going, they're coming up here where I am in Kingston, the Catskill Mountains, and going out to the Hamptons and other places, other nicer places. And this is unprecedented. Now let's put another layer on it. All this online schooling now for universities. Yeah. What, a bunch of them are already doing it. All these college towns. What's going to happen to all the businesses there? The high streets. Look at the hotel business. Look at tourism. Look at travel. Look at conventions and trade shows. Gone. Gone. No conventions, no trade shows. You look at the profits coming from these casinos, and they're only down like 98%. Then you think of all the people who stay at the hotels and they have trade shows and events. Gone. Oh, and then all the entertainers and all the supporting businesses are those. The food, the, 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 everything around it. Gone. All the musicians, all the artists, trade fairs, uh, not, uh, 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 state fairs, all the different fairs going on during the summer. Over. No arts and crafts being sold. But we won't talk about that. We'll just talk about uh, Alphabet and, and, and Microsoft and what Amazon is doing. And, you know, we don't care about anybody else. Is it a massive number of listeners are tweeting about the World Economic Forum's buzzword 
the reset. You know, the new normal, the reset, a, a new economic paradigm. I, I'm pretty simplistic. I get my information from trusted sources, the journal being one of them. Again, not just because you're here. You get plenty of mentions when you're not here. Um, and I look at it and I think, well, at the very basic level, this is obviously a big wealth and land grab by the banks and by a few massive corporations like Amazon and Google. And then you, you have the World Economic Forum talking about the, the Great Reset. So a part of me thinks, you know, and I like to try and keep fairly level-headed and only talk about what I can prove. But I believe now more than ever that this is all by design, basically, to basically push whatever's left on the planet in the direction of a handful, you know, a handful of, um, of, of elitists. What do you think? I don't think it was planned, but now it's being taken advantage of. Right. Billionaires in the United States have seen their wealth go up over $600 billion since March. And I mentioned all these other businesses going out of business, so the monopolies become more monopolistic. Yeah. So that's what's going on. Here's what I see ha as it happened. You go back to our January 28th Trends Journal. Read the headline cover. Coronavirus, 106 dead in China. This is all big news. And my next line was 1.4 billion people still alive. Yeah, yeah. You know, what the hell are you telling me this crap for? They're dying in China, like, by the minutes, with filthy air. That's why they, they wear those, those masks that now everybody's used to wearing. Only 1.5 million Chinese die a year from air, air polluted-related diseases. But, hey, so anyway, this thing breaks out in the Wuhan province, right? Yeah. Go back to last year, June. There were protests, riots, and demonstrations going on in Hong Kong that the Chinese government couldn't stop. And I was on Hong Kong TV a number of times talking about it, writing about it every week in the Trends Journal, so weekly, what was going on in Hong Kong. And I talked to the reporters off the air, you know, we're, no, we're going to keep fighting this, we're not going to stop. But I read about this, no, no, that's not true, this is what's going on, they're not going to. Out of a population of 7.5 million people, up to sometimes 2 million people would be taken to the streets. Unprecedented. Unprecedented, yeah. So they couldn't stop it. But when the virus broke out at the end of January of this year, they clamped down and stopped the demonstrations in Hong Kong. Demonstrations stopped. They issued new draconian orders that Hong Kong is now back in full control of Beijing. Out of the news, most people don't know about it. That, to me, was the power grab. Then, after that power grab, other crazy dictatorial maniacs started grabbing power around the, around the world. You look what's going on. There were, there were protests. One of my top trends of 2020, we write the top trends in, in the year before, in December 2019, was New World Disorder. There were protests and riots going on everywhere. Lebanon, France, Hong Kong, Brazil, uh, not Brazil, Bolivia, uh, Chile, Colombia, Argentina, Algeria, South Africa, all over the world, people protesting about lack of basic living standards, violence, government corruption. They couldn't stop them. They closed them all down. India's economy was, India had nine consecutive quarters of declining GDP. Last year, Oh, excuse me, it's nine now, it was seven last year. <clears throat> they, they laid off a million workers just in the auto industry. There were demonstrations all over India. They locked it down. They stopped the demonstrations. Same thing with Chile. One country after another. So these power-hungry maniacs and the ones that want more power, they're the ones that took advantage of it. And the rich just took more advantage of it. Now, we're talking about India locking down the entire place. Now, you know India. It's a very clean, sterile place. High luxury standard <laughs> of living. Everybody has the best of the best. Yeah, yeah. Nobody dies of the pollution, the poverty. No, no, everything's like the pesticides, the chemicals. It's a perfectly beautiful place. Of course, I'm being facetious. Of course. But you're right. March, 
April, May, June, July, five months out of a country of 1.38 billion people, the grand total of 46,779,000 dead. 47,000 out of 1.38 billion in a dirty, filthy, polluted country where probably that many people die every two weeks from the crap that they're eating, drinking, and, and, and breathing. As the rest of the world, everybody afraid of COVID, but hey, you like those uh, GMOs? No, I know I, you like those pesticides in your food. No, I like the chemicals in the water, chemicals in the air, and chemicals in the earth. Oh, how about artificial flavors? I like artificial flavors, artificial colors. Feed me crap. Who's dying from this? Only the facts. At least 50% of the people dying of COVID are from nursing homes that are chronically ill. Spot on. Spot on. Right? Yeah, 100%. Oh, no. When you go to a nursing home, you know, after you get better, you go to day camp. Everything's going to be fine. You're not going to die. And the average age in Italy was only 80. And then, who are the other people? Facts. Only the facts. Obesity. Type 2 diabetics. Yeah. People Com suffering from heart disease. Comorbidities, yeah. ailments. Hey. Obesity? We're number one. We're at number one. That's right. 42% of Americans are obese. Look at the cover of our Trends Journal. Junk food plus junk news equals junk brains. The brilliant cover this, um, this week. That's Anthony Frieda. Frieda's great. It's a great These cover. These covers, these are the new New Yorker covers of the 21st century. One after another. They're brilliant. One Charles. after another. And it's a great point, this. We, we locked... Um, See, very senior citizens, citizens into care homes here. And then we emptied hospitals of older people and we sent them back to care homes without testing them. So thousands died. You're right, everybody else then has got a comorbidity. And the UK isn't too far behind the United States in, in terms of obesity problems. And again, it's not so much down to laziness as it's down to terrible food, chemicals and and all the rest of it. And want, laziness, not cooking your own food. I know, I know it's there. Laziness I is mean, there. I mean, yeah. every, I, I try to cook every day, and I don't have a spare minute of my time. I have a garden. I, you know, I make tomato, fresh tomato sauce, yeah. you know. But it's a cultural and, uh, thing with you, know, you though. I, I try to, matter of fact, just before I got on the air, I had a nice arugula salad with olive oil and, and, and vinegar and some great arugula from my garden and, 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 and tomatoes from my garden. If I was to go out, that would have been about like a $7 dinner. It probably cost about, you know, yeah. 40, 40 cents, if well, that. My, my old neighbour, he died in the mid-1990s. He died um, an old man, Egidio Gianni. He was originally from Pisa uh, in Italy. Um, and he became a great kind of friend and mentor to me. I loved him. Uh, I really loved him. And he used to talk about, you know, his frustration with Irish people. How we'd kind of forgotten how to grow and use our garden spaces. How we'd forgotten to use green grocers. And instead we were going to supermarkets. And he kind of predicted, God love him, 25 years now he'd be dead. He predicted that we would get to this stage where nobody anymore, except for the Italians, he said it will never happen to Italians. They will yeah. always be able to cook and look after themselves. It's a cultural yeah. thing. But the rest of us, you're right, we don't. We do. My other half is a, is a great cook and loves to cook. But um, yeah, the vast majority of people buy processed crap from the supermarket. And even if you're buying, you know, you, you don't, if you, if you can't afford to buy organic vegetables, it, it's better than eating the junk. And again, you, the people that are dying from this, they, the, none of the major media talks about building up your immune system. No, no one don't. talks about that. The first book I worked on, uh, my, my former wife, Mary, so rest in peace, had um, ulcerative colitis. And uh, they wanted to take out, you know, her intestines and everything else when she was 27 years old. And I'm going back into the late 70s, early 80s. And we found a chiropractor that, you know, taught her how to eat. And um, the first book I worked on was called Natural Healing. And she got totally healed. Uh, and, and so I learned about natural healing. It was, it was a Warner book. It was a big book. And I have an honorary doctor from the National University of Health Sciences. So when you look at what the people are eating, it, it's a matter of, they're, look, they're, they're doing it to themselves. 
matter of fact, in this Trends Journal, we talk about you know soda and what it's done. And in Oaxaca, uh, Mexico, they just banned selling soda to kids yeah. because of the type 2 diabetes rates yeah. that are escalating in, in Mexico. It's becoming the type 2 diabetes capital of the world. We so, thought- and, and, and food stamps in America, you could buy junk food and soda with them. We've had a tweet from Patricia. Um, she's in Zurich. She's um, Irish American. Well, her, her, her ancestry is Irish. Uh, big fan of yours, and I know this to be true. She says, Richie and Gerald, I talked to my 88 year old mother yesterday. She's in a very good nursing home in South Florida. She has to eat alone, wear a mask at all times when out of her apartment. She's a very positive person and kept saying, I'm fine all the time while she was crying. My heart is breaking. We've really. There's been a real movement against senior citizens in recent years, isn't there? They're, they're, they're kind of forgotten people, I think. Yeah, they nobody they don't care. Nobody cares about no, them. Yet. I mean, look at the, look at the, you know, yeah, I, I, look at the morons and imbeciles we have running our lives. You know, I'm up here in Colonial Kingston. It's beautiful. Going for a walk last night with a friend, and I said to him, "Look at this building, this post office. They put this post office next to." An ugly, it's ugly piece of garbage crap next to is about an 1880s building and a 1830s building. And, and this ugly piece of garbage between it. You go around the corner, they call it the glass monstrosity. The big ugly piece of glass that they built for the motor vehicle department and ripped down in uh, an 1870s hotel. You see that all over the world. Look at the morons you have in charge of your life. Morons. Bureaucrats and politicians. Politics. They suck the life out of you. And the people better grow up. Because if we don't have a renaissance and, and start appreciating joy and beauty, it's over. And as for your friend from Zurich, I have a sister in a nursing home. I can't go see her. A buddy of mine told me he talked to his father who's is pretty healthy, lives alone uh, in, in, in uh, Florida. He said he's bored stiff. He can't go out. Jesus. Oh, Christ. I don't mean to blaspheme. I know, I know um, you're, you've got a great faith. I don't want to blaspheme. Uh, questions that came in. We've got two minutes left. Thanks for giving more time than you normally have. Oh, no, I, I love busy. being on your show. Oh, I you're too kind. As much time as you can do. Thanks, mate. I love it. Now, um... And I, I, I love that you come on. Transresearch.com, folks. Uh, subscribe to the journal. Not just because it's excellent. Well, because it's excellent, that'll do. Let me, let me say this to you. Um, gold, you called it again. Has gold peaked? I'm being asked to ask you. Or is there room for gold to get even more expensive? There's definitely room for it to get more expensive. Can it go down more? Yes. How far down? I'm not sure yet. At this point, I would say about 1850. Right. Uh, but I'm not sure yet. You got to watch more of it. And here's the deal. Just keep watching what the dollar does. Gold is still up very, you know, I called it last June at $1,332 an ounce. We sent out to our subscribers a trend alert. I announced the gold bull run again when it was $1,332 an ounce. And now as we're speaking, it's 1941 an ounce. You told me, it, you told me on this program back in June, you, you said that yep. very thing to me here. You did, yeah, absolutely. And then, and then in June, we told our subscribers that silver was ready to spike. Silver was $17 an ounce. And now it's $25 and 26 cents an ounce. They're going to keep going up. They're going to try to push them down. Long term, I can see, I can see gold at 4,000, 5,000 an ounce. Wow. I can see silver at $100 an ounce. What they're going to do when we're talking about the reset, they're going to come out with digital, digital cash. They're going to change the whole system because they can't keep pumping in all this digital trash backed by nothing and printed on nothing. They'll come up with a new currency. You can't touch that dirty, filthy money currency, hard currency. You need a digital currency so we know every penny that you spend. And they'll, re, and they'll re-denominate the money. That's how I believe they're going to come, how to go, they're going to try to get out of this. And that's why precious metals are going to stay precious. Since I've been doing... And again, I don't give financial... No advice. I want to make that clear. No, you never do. 
No, you just call it as you see it. Um, since I came out of commercial radio to do this program, you've been speaking to me more or less since then. Since we, since I was working in for Talk Radio Europe on the Mediterranean in Spain, and there's nobody really been with me as long. With me, it sounds very pretentious. You're the man. You've been a guest on this program. Um, um, I wouldn't do it without you. It's great to have you on. Thanks. I Thank hope you you're, so much. No, I hope and I hope you'll be able to get to see your sister soon. That really saddens me. That and what Patricia. Yeah, you know, and I I cook for her, you know, and she's half out of her mind. Oh, and by the way, she got. They called me up. She had the virus, and you know, she's she's a bit out of it, and so she never knew she even had it. Sounded the same every day. I make her laugh. She never knew she had it. Fourteen days later, they said she's okay. Yeah, you see. And she's heartbroken because I used to cook for her, bring it down, you know, make her the stuff that she loves. And it's just so sad. And how about the people who can't have funerals or go see their loved ones when they're dying? It, this is, we have sick people, again, the same freaks that had us hiding on the desks and doing air raid drills during the Cold War are doing it now during the COVID war. Trendsresearch.com, subscribe to the journal. There are very few real independent journalists working today, uh, completely unbiased and objective and calling it the right way. Support it, trendsresearch.com. I hope to see you again in a few weeks, my friend, after I come back from my own break. I can't wait to get away from it for a couple of weeks. Thanks for gracing us with your presence uh, today, and my friend. And thank you, and thank you for all that you do. I love being on your show. You're a gent, Gerald, and thanks again to all your staff as well. The brilliant Gerald Salente, live on the Richie Allen Radio Show uh, from Kingston, New York, of course. Trendsresearch.com, subscribe to the journal, and check out Trends in the News on YouTube as well. Very funny guy is Gerald Salente, and always a gent.